Hello everyone, welcome to Hibbing Community College. I'm Chef Travis Hansen. I'm the second year culinary instructor here at HCC. I also teach the Pastry Artist Certificate. As you can see, we're in our first year culinary kitchen. Our students here prepare the food for our cafeteria five days a week. In the, when they rotate through their stations, they're going to rotate through five different stations, starting off with our bakery stations where we prepare breakfast pastries and dinner rolls from scratch daily. Um, across the way here is our salad bar station, which they learn knife skills, preparation work, time management, that kind of stuff. We'll move down to our dessert station, which is right here. Every week we prepare three different desserts for our cafeteria. Moving down a little bit further is going to be our range station. In our range station we have a few different types of equipment that we use. We have our convection ovens, our conventional, we have ranges. Across the way over here we have a steamer. Um, we have a tilt or a steam jacketed kettle and a tilt skillet. Now every day they prepare a different entree, a starch and a vegetable for our cafeteria. So we'll move down into our surgery area here. We also have a proofer over here that we use, utilize quite a bit. Um, this is our surgery area. We, like I said, we're open five days a week. Uh, open for breakfast from nine o'clock to 10.30, then we close and we're open from, for lunch from 12 or 11 o'clock until 1 o'clock daily. So everybody from our students or current students that we have on campus and also the public, general public, can come in and utilize our kitchen or cafeteria. Um, down on the end here, we also do five days a week, or four days a week, excuse me, different grill specials. So we have a charbroiler, we have flat top, we have fryers. We do everything from appetizers. Uh, every Wednesday is our burger day, so we do that kind of things. Um, over here is our actually our salad bar area. So we have a full line salad bar. It's one of our most popular um, choices. So that's kind of what we do here in the first year kitchen. I'll be right back and I'll introduce you to our second year kitchen. All right, so here we are in our second year kitchen. The biggest difference between this kitchen and our first year kitchen is our first year kitchen is geared towards institutionalized cooking, which is for like hospitals, school cafeterias, banquet halls, and that kind of stuff. In this kitchen, we solely focus on made to order items. Everything is made from scratch in here. This is our um, salads, desserts, and sandwich stations. We've got our panini press, our salad preparation area, that kind of stuff. So in this kitchen, we are open three days a week. We're open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Monday is our prep day. And Friday, the students have generals that they have to take, so we're not open then. Um, this is our behind or our line cooking area. Like I said, we got a range, we got our salamander heater, flat top, uh, fryer, steamer, and of course our hotline here. When we are open, we're actually open from 8.30 until 10 o'clock for breakfast. We do a full line breakfast, anything from eggs made to order, omelets, hash browns, you name it. Basically, almost like a Perkins style menu. For our lunch, or for our lunch we're open from 11 to 12.30. We do everything from burgers, uh, steaks, chicken. We've done, well, last semester we did chicken parmesan and walleye also. So our students learn how to prep and hold ingredients so that they're able to make it to order versus making it in bulk. So we'll take a break here and I'll get set up and we're actually gonna demo a sugar sculpture for you guys. All right, welcome back to the sugar sculpting demo. The interesting thing with this is it's actually directly related to our pastry artist certificate. Our pastry artist certificate actually consists of four classes, edible showpiece and design, cake decorating, cake baking, and advanced baking. And if you take our edible showpiece design class, you'll actually be making a sugar sculpture in that class. Uh, sugar sculpting is, gets kind of technical, but the recipe is pretty simple. All it is is sugar, water, corn syrup, and some sort of an acid. Here we're using citric, citric acid 
for this recipe. Um, you're going to need basically a torch to assemble a showpiece and you'll need either a sterno or a tea light, something that you can use as far as a smaller flame to stick your parts together. Uh, one of the most important things is to make sure your sugar is cooked up to temperature and to make sure your sugar is at room temperature when you start. If it's cold, it's going to break when you hit it with the heat. So what I'm going to do is when I'm starting, I'm going to take my pieces that I'm gluing together and I'm actually going to lay them out before I put any heat on them. If I take and heat these up and then put it on here and it's not where I want it, too late, it's stuck there. If I try to take it off, it's going to break. So I always want to make sure that I'm lining up my pieces and once I get the base put together, I'm actually going to move it on. i got a turntable here so I can rotate it for you guys. But I make sure I have a sill pad down so that I'm not heating up my counter, but it's going to get noisy. I'm going to heat up my piece. Oh, yep, it's hot. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually heating it until it looks like it's liquid. And right in here I can see where it floods out just a little bit. If I don't see it where it's flooding out, then I know that it's not adhered correctly and it's going to be a weak joint to it. I just want to hold it for about 5-10 seconds to make sure everything stays up and I'm going to keep an eye on it as I go to make sure it doesn't start leaning. Because if this straight up and down and I build straight up, it's going to be a nice solid. If I've got everything sideways, that center of gravity. Same thing if you're on a ladder, you don't want to be reaching way over to the side. It's the same thing with this. You want to make sure that all your pieces are straight up and down. So you want that center of gravity level. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take, this is going to be my top piece, and I'm actually going to take it, make sure that all my pieces are going to fit together. And when you're heating these up, you want to make sure that you don't hold it like this and go and heat it because heat rises, you're going to burn your hands. Okay. Now this one gets a little bit tricky. Just debating how I want to put these on there. And all these are actually done with, this portion of it is done with molds that we have for our pastry artist, cl artist class. So that our students, they're learning, but they're not going to get frustrated. You can freeform all these, but it's very difficult to freeform them. So I like to have the molds that they can use for doing the class so that they get the experience in not only molding, but how to assemble without the frustration of it breaking on them. So I'm going to heat these top pieces. And I'm just going to kind of look on where I want. Like I said, you got to make sure you line these up exactly where you want them, otherwise you only get one shot. Alright, just like that. So I'm going to move my soap pad out of the way here. I'm going to bring in my turntable. So I can do this without knocking anything over. So now I can take and rotate it around for you guys. Now we've got a couple different things that we're going to be using today. 
So here's our hair and show piece that I'll be using for you. Now these are done with molds, like I said, and they're silicone molds and they just kind of look like this. They're real flexy, flexible. We take and cook our sugar down, we put it into a pitcher and then we'll actually take the pitchers and pour our hot molten sugar into the molds and then we can basically, here's one that I have here, it's a leaf. Base, all you do is you take and turn it out and that's what it looks like, just like that. So all these pieces that I have here, minus the flowers and the pastillage, are done with this, what we have for the students with molds. So I didn't want to go too advanced where you know I wasn't representing what the students are doing. So now same thing with our move this over just a little bit just in case I don't want to get too close to that. I also got to remember my hat. So I got my own hair. So I always want to take and stand these up so I don't break these. Grab that kind of awkward. Alright, so I'm always going to take and line up everything I have before I really get into gluing them down. So I'm going to glue that way. And this stuff is very fragile. It is just basically like working with glass. Here's where I'm going to start using my lamps. And I never want to set my torch up like this. I want to lay it down. I learned the hard way on that. Um, did that, set, stirred up right, bumped it with my elbow, bang, whole showpiece came down. So now, as I put these on, as you can see, going this, this way across, I've got a lot of stability. This way, I only have not even a quarter inch, there's not a lot of stability. So I cast off these little circles where I can put them on and use them as a, basically a kickstand. Just a little kind of secret that I use. So I'm gonna heat up my, real lightly, I'm gonna heat my base. That to go. Now, this is where it gets very important to make sure that you have it straight up and down. I'm going to hold it with one hand and I'm going to melt the disc I prepared. Glue that right on like that. So you want to step back, just make sure that everything is straight up and down. If it's leaning just a little bit, I don't know if you can kind of tell it's a little bit this way, that's fine as long as it's leaning up against this. If it's leaning the other way, there's nothing to support it. So now we're going to do the same thing on this one. I'm going to double check where we want it placed. Go right in there. So I'll grab another one of my discs here. So this is kind of also where you got to be kind of careful. I don't want to hit too much heat onto this place or this piece. So I'm actually going to turn. A little bit more. So I'm 
Now, as you can see, this way there's a lot of stability, but I can move it real easily the other way. Take that. Let's go over here because I'm right handed. Level him off. Now, usually I do in the spring semester go out to high schools around the area and do some sugar demos for them. And normally I end up lighting my gloves on fire a couple times. So I tell them always at the beginning of the demo to kind of keep track how many times I do. I've already burned myself twice on this sculpture, so but I'm good at hiding it now. All right, so there's kind of where we're sitting at as far as just the herons trophies. Now I'm going to take and start doing some embellishments on it. So I've got some, you usually find herons in the um, grass or wetlands. So I am going to take and add some grass pieces to it. Now the one thing that I want to be careful with is I don't want to get too much heat onto this piece. Otherwise it could start to bend and leak down. I'm going to do it very carefully. And the other thing that i got to be careful for is not hitting The different pieces of the sculpture. And not lighting myself on fire on the lamp on my sleeve. Now as I put together a sculpture, I usually want to make sure that I'm decorating in a 360 degree field, just so that if someone sees it from behind, it's all encompassed and you can, you don't have to have like a dead spot on the showpiece where there's no movement. Like I said, the more I heat up this base, especially in the back here, the more I got to be careful because it's going to want to just kind of wilt in. So there's kind of where you're seeing in the back. I've got the supports. It's supported by the two discs that I put in. But you want to make sure that kind of all your glue joints are either clean or hidden. So now I'm going to add some of my flowers here. Start doing some embellishment. So now these are pulled sugar that I 
made for the sculpture. These are water lilies that I did. So I'm gonna add these to it. And then what I did was I actually um, pulled them and then I put them on these discs so that I can handle them easier than handling just the um, petals itself. And very, very carefully, because yeah, they like to do just that, they like to break. Try to do this without burning myself. And the thinner the sugar is, the more likely it is to break with um, putting heat to it. So you really want to be careful when you're um, heating up the showpiece to add these. was my finger, couldn't tell. I doubt you can hear it, but there's little kind of clicks and cracks that as I'm heating these different pieces up, like especially the flowers here, putting them on, being that these are actually so thin they're, the heat hits those petals and it actually is putting hairline cracks into the petals. So you have to be very careful with them when you're heating them up. you got to kind of watch out for is molten sugar dripping on your hand. So you got to hold them up just in for 30 seconds or so because like I said the sugars you're heating that up to stick them together so there's kind of our flowers adhered. So now I'm gonna stop real quick. I'm gonna hit pause. I've gotta get some glue melted down sugar actually, which I use for glues, glue to stick on my pasta. So I'll be right back. All right, so one thing that I forgot to do is I forgot to put the wings on the and so I'm gonna do that real quick. This is where it's really going to start to get fragile. So you want to be very careful as you're putting these on. If these come down, I mean, it comes down. I mean, I'm hoping it doesn't, but I've had them come down in the past. And there's not really too much you can do other than start over. Take what you got and move on from there. So I think what I might do is I'm going to pause the video and I'm gonna get these glued on real quick because I gotta hold them into place. So I'll get these glued on and then we'll move on to doing the pastillage. So I'll be right back. All right, so we got the um, wings on. So now we're gonna take, I got pastillage that's been airbrushed. This is basically a 
sugar paste. So now we're going to start adding some accentuations to the showpiece. So I'm going to grab some of these smaller pieces. I got a little bit of sugar here that I melted down. I'm just going to use that to stick these on. And this is all about uh, individual taste and artistic expression. How you set these all up on here. You could give the exact same pieces to five different people and you're going to come up with five different or 15 different ways to do them. It's all just about finding the right piece for the right place. Sugar hair on uh, it. Oh, and then that happens. So, you can cry over it, or we just continue on. Clean off our piece, grab a different pearl, Usually I don't work too much around stuff like this, because that happens.
So once we get these pretty well stuck on here, and we're satisfied with what we've got, which I am, well, once this guy sits up, So there. Now if you want, we can take, and this is totally up to you if you were doing this sugar sculpture, we've got little pieces of what I call coral. It's actually molten sugar that's poured over a bucket of ice. So you pour the sugar from the top down, and then when you pull it out, you get this real nice kind of coral looking. And being that, you know, we're kind of a water theme with the water lilies, these could be like uh, coral. I mean, I know coral is not fresh water, but you could use it as like seaweed, something like that, just to kind of accentuate down on the bottom. That in there. And then I do have some small little pieces. Stick kind of up on the side. The thing with these is when you take them out of water, you got to put them onto a cooling rack and then run a fan on them so that the ice melts and it evaporates the water because the number one enemy of sugar is going to be water, of course, humidity. And I might try to find just one more little piece. It's got to separate back there. And then I have these really cool looking geodes that I made. Now these are pastillage, and you can take and do pastillage and then you can take like some super grand sugar, just real big sugar crystals, put a little bit of royal icing and you can um, color them and do them that way. Or you can take and make saturated sugar, which is how you make rock candy and put them in a sugar solution and have it that way and then you have to wait probably about two weeks in order for the crystals to grow but there we have our finished showpiece i think it looks pretty good i want to thank you for your time coming and spending with us and learning and seeing how i put these together i hope that you enjoyed the demo and the information that i gave and i hope you have a great year and thank you again for coming.